first time in my life I've ever like started to physically feel my age. You can, it's tough, man. You know how I know I'm getting old? This is embarrassing, but I was in my hotel room. I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was jerking off like, <laughs> and I was like really sweating it out. <clears throat> And this is when I knew I was old. I, I just gave up in the middle, like nothing even happened. Like, I don't like looking at my dick anymore. My dick looks distinguished. It's old, an old looking dick. It's got salt and pepper hair all around it. My dick looks like Morgan Freeman in the 90s. <laughs> Without the dots. <laughs> My dick narrates, Dave pulled me out and started jerking me around, and jerking me around. But not with the same vigors when he was young. <laughs> he and I both knew nothing was coming out. I see my age and my children. I came home from the road. This is not long ago. I, I've been gone for, if you can picture, I was gone for weeks and weeks. And when I came back, uh, nobody was home. <laughs> now one person in my family thought that uh, maybe I'd like to see them when I got back. Like, <laughs> they knew when I was coming back, but they just weren't, they just weren't home. And that shit was a wake up call. You know, like when my kids were little and the tour bus would pull up to the house, these motherfuckers would spill out. <laughs> Dad is home, hooray! And they'd hug me and kiss me and then as the years went on, they'd get less interested. Hey everybody, look, it's Mr. Promises back from the road. <laughs> but empty house, that's... And some cold shit. <laughs> and I went into my older son's room. I was like, hello, hello. He was gone. And I'd never done this thing before, but for some reason I just did it. I just, I just looked through his shit. <laughs> just to see who this motherfucker was becoming. <laughs> and I found these notebooks and I started going through the notebooks and it was all this wonderful poetry in them. Written as his handwriting. I didn't even know this nigga wrote poems. <laughs> and then I looked through his drawers and I opened up his middle drawer and I found his rolling paper. <laughs> and I looked down at them papers like, oh, that's where that poetry's coming from. <laughs> And that shit broke my heart. I mean, I smoke weed, but I mourned my son's innocence. And I cried a little bit. And I took his papers upstairs in my room. <laughs> Rolled some weed that I'd hid from the family. And I got really high. And then I got paranoid. So I put his papers back how I found them. <laughs> so he wouldn't know what I was up to. This nigga won't even know that that happened until he sees his special. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I found your papers. <laughs> He's a cold motherfucker. Let me tell you, this kid is only 16 years old. Listen to what he did to me. This motherfucker calls me up in the middle of the night. It was 1 o'clock in the morning. He goes, Dad, don't be mad. I knew something was terribly wrong. I said, what's going on? He said, listen, I'm fine. And don't forget, you told me to do this. I'm at a party and my designated driver had too much to drink. And me and my friends need you to come pick us up. I said, Jesus Christ, it's one o'clock in the morning, nigga. I am shit faced. <laughs> But I figured, fuck, it's better me than some kid. 
I might as well roll the dice and go pick my nigga up. I said, all right, I'm coming to get you. Just give me the address and I'll be right there. And then he gave me the address and I was, I was shocked. I said, son, you are not going to believe this, but I'm at the same party, nigga. They grow fast, don't they? 